Are you struggling with real estate or thinking about getting in, but you can't get over your concerns? A lot of it has to do with having the right mindset. So we're going to go through some common concerns and my perspective on how you should handle it. What's up? My name is Henry. Welcome to The Wong Mindset. I'm from San Francisco and I invest in long-term real estate for cash flow and appreciation. It's definitely possible here in San Francisco. It just takes a lot of work, money, and knowing what to look for. I changed my whole mindset about this in 2015 when I took about 200,000, it was all in 401k, and I turned that into over a million dollars in three years. I started when I was 34, had a wife, two young kids, and a normal engineering job, nothing fancy. So now I'm trying to inspire someone to change their mindset because the world can be so amazing if you have the wrong mindset. <laughs> so the first thing everyone says to me when I talk to them about real estate investing is that it's too risky. At the end of the day, I just think everyone's worried that they'll lose their money. So how do you have confidence that you won't lose money? You need to do your research. You can't just jump in and hope for the best. So make sure you dig in and learn as much as you can before you jump in. Also, list out all of the possible things that can make you go out of business. Then go through each one of those things and come with a game plan and see how you would want to handle that. When you come up with a game plan for every concern, then what's the problem? Why is it too risky? When I first started, I had to sit down with my mom while she questioned me on every concern she ever had in her life. And when I first told her I was going to invest in a duplex, she laughed at me. She's saying, how are you going to do this? It's so risky. It's so much hassle. But this was good for me to see if I could convince her and myself, if I knew everything well enough that I could explain it to her. So after a week, I convinced her and she was on board. And now that I've done it, everyone around me is like, of course, this real estate is the best way to go. That's how you, that's how people get rich. One other thing that I wanted to add about risk is if you don't invest in real estate or you don't invest at all, then you risk running out of money in retirement. Even a normal 401k, social security, a little bit of savings. To me, that's risky. But at the end of the day with real estate, if you've done your research and you have a plan for everything that might come up, then you just got to do it. Another thing that I hear all the time is investing in real estate is a hassle. You have to talk to tenants, you have to talk to contractors, you have to talk to agents and you have to manage the property and you have, you're going to get phone calls late at night. To me, a hassle is when you're old and broke. Ooh. When you can't go on trips, you can't replace your hoopty. You don't have life insurance, health insurance, health care. You can't help your kids with a car, education, marriage, nothing. You can barely cover yourself. All right, so I think a little bit of work right now is worth a lifetime of relaxation, don't you think? And that's how you should look at it. If you have the right mindset, if you look at it as just putting a little bit of work right now and then having the best life ever, then I think it's totally worth it. And you wouldn't even look at it as a hassle. It's just part of the job. It's part of the business. Something else I hear all the time is getting calls for repairs, right? You're worried that someone's going to call you at 3 a.m. to fix the toilet. So you need to look at it as part of the business. That is not that big a deal. Also, you should think of it as you're responsible for someone's home. They count on you. They pay you rent every month. If you get a call, the first reaction you should have is to find out what the issue is and then what the options are to resolve it. It's not saying, oh man, someone's calling me and oh my gosh, if you need to drop by and check it out or you need to call someone on Yelp to go figure it out, then do it. If you bought correctly, then this should all be built into your cash flow. You'll have happier tenants, you'll be happier, and in the long run, you're going to make more money. And something to remember too, it's your house. If the roof's leaking, that's going to drip all the way down throughout your property. Do you really want that? If the toilet's leaking, it's going to leak crap down all to the lower floors. So don't immediately have a big reaction to these calls. Otherwise, this might not be for you. All right, so let's talk about maintenance. Um, these are like some of the bigger things like the systems within the house or the roof, you know, water heater, furnace, something like that. These things should be built into the cash flow too. So when you first buy a house, if there's anything major, you should really take care of those things up front so you don't have to think about it for years. If you're still concerned, then look for newer houses that won't need renovations for a while. At the end of the day, it's all a write-off. You get to make your house nicer, add more value while paying less in taxes. So the next thing is, what if I don't get rent for a couple months? There's vacancies or repairs that I need to do and I'm out of commission for a couple months. 
So that should also be built into your cash flow. When you first buy the house and you see what kind of income you can get, you should already be factoring that in. So for me, there's two ways to cover this. You need a couple months of mortgage in the bank and also you need to have an equity line. Whenever I close on a property, the first thing I try to get is an equity line. I call it my lifeline. A lifeline could last you years in emergencies, but just so you know, the banks can take this away at any time. So that's something you should know. One way to avoid this is to find properties in nicer locations, near transportation, near schools, shops, and or near jobs. Also, you gotta make sure your marketing, your Craigslist ads, your descriptions, your pictures, your pricing, all needs to be right so that you can avoid this. The other thing is bad tenants. People are always worried about the nightmare tenant, right? That trashed your house and messed up everything. So to me, it's all about screening. You pick these people and let them into your house. So you need to have a really thorough screening process. I won't go into too much detail about this, but from the ad that you post up, from the questions that you ask in between, from the application, the references, checking old landlords, verifying employment, and then credit, background, evictions checks, and then also from the lease that you use, getting an initial deposit, all of those things, you know, crappy tenants will drop out at any point during that process. But even if you did everything that you could, things change, things happen. So you just need to learn the eviction process in your area. Don't be afraid of that. Just be knowledgeable in how it works. You know, make sure you follow the law. In San Francisco here, it's pretty crazy. If you do one thing wrong, you can just mess up the whole process for yourself. All right, but if you pick the right location to buy and you market it properly and you price it right, I mean, you should really have your pick of tenants, right? And don't rush it. Don't get emotional. Do everything that it's going to take. Don't jump in without doing your research and knowing exactly what to do. Don't just, oh, you know, this guy is kind of cool. No, and I want a handshake and let's do this. Or, oh, I'll pay you a couple months rent in advance. No. No, please don't do that. Please. So what if the market goes down? So you just need to know during the financial crisis and everybody, all the houses were being foreclosed on. In my area, the rent went up because everybody was selling their houses. Everybody was had to... Everybody had to rent. So really when you bought, you should have had a good amount of cash flow. So even if the rent does go down, you should be fine. So even in the worst case, and you had to lower the rents so that you, you break even. To me, that's still worth it. You get to own, in my case, like a million dollar property for free. And even if it goes under your cash flow and you finally have to go negative, to me, depending on the property, it might still make sense. A lot of people buy their houses and they just pay with their jobs, right? Their income just pays for that. They get no, this property does not pay them anything. And if I get to own a million dollar property and only have to pay a thousand, to me, that's still worth it. But I would never go into a property day one negative, right? You always have to have cash flow. You need to have a cushion. You never know what's going to happen. You don't want to go in negative and then go in deep negative if anything happens. Uh, the house that I recently got, if I get rent from 5K to 3K, I'll still break even. So to me, that's still worth it. I mean, what are the chances that you will go from a $5,000 unit down to $3,000, right? And even if it goes to $2,000, and if I have to pay $1,000 to own a million dollar property. The other thing is you just need to think if in 30 years, do you think this property is going to be worth more? or less than right now. If it's worth double, triple, then to me, why does it matter? I don't care what the price is right now. I just wanna make sure that I'm making money every month. So if you've done all your research and you believe in real estate, one thing that I struggled with is now a good time. So one way I look at it is if you know your risks and you know you have a really good chance of getting over any hump and the reward is totally worth it, right? Like the 30 year outlook, the, the monthly income that you get is worth it. Then it's also just what are the odds? Like what are your chances, right? Of having this work out. If it's really high, like you, then you just have to do it. You have to do it right now. Like right now, right now. Cause especially right here in the Bay Area, if you hesitate and you wait a couple years, it could have gone up like double digit percentage and then you might never be able to get back in, right? You can never catch up to that down payment that it takes to, to get a place here. All right, so let's look at a couple scenarios. If you're getting a duplex to house hack, then I'm assuming you're living mortgage free, 
right? You're living in one unit and you have the other parts rented out. They should most likely cover your mortgage. In that case, if the market went down tomorrow, then why does it matter to you? You're still living here mortgage free. Someone is paying for your mortgage. I wouldn't care if it dropped by half. You still get a, a house to live in rent free, mortgage free. You have to pay some other expenses, but at the end of the day, it's better than going out there and renting some other place, right? You have to pay rent, but here you get to own a house and have your mortgage covered, basically just paying for just normal expenses. So the other scenario is if you're buying a duplex just for investment and you're renting the whole thing out, then that case is even better. So you're renting out both units, getting rent, and that should definitely cover everything. And you're getting some cash flow at the end of the day. Then if the market goes down, why does it matter to you? You should be looking to buy more. So the last scenario I want to talk about is what everyone thinks is the safest bet, right? Buying a house for yourself and your family to live in, right? So to me, that's the riskiest scenario. You're basically buying a place and paying money out of your pocket every single month. And it does not give you any income back, right? You're just taking money out of your pocket. So you're basically depending on your job for 30 years to cover all the expenses. And then you're hoping that after 30 years of paying this off, that you'll be set. So if you ever needed that money or wanted to use any of that equity, um, most people will have to sell. Then where would you live? So if you want to stay, you still have to pay property taxes. And here in SF, that goes up 2% every year. So how are you going to be able to stay in this house until you're 70 on a fixed income? If you ever run out of money, you're going to have to sell. So in this case, if the market went down, you're really going to feel it. And you're hoping you don't lose your job because that's the only thing that's paying for this place. So if you're house hacking or buying an investment and it cash flows day one, you're able to get a lifeline on it and you're able to close on it, then yes, right now is a good time. Just don't sit on it for a couple years hoping that it's going to go down. If it goes down, I'm buying more. All right. So after hearing all the common concerns, you need to invest in real estate, manage your concerns, only focus on the solutions. Then you just got to do it. All right, so please give this video a like. I'm gonna be putting out videos each week on mindset, life, success. It's really gonna be more focused on having the right mindset. I think with everything that you wanna do, you have to have the right mindset going in. And I think that gives you a really good chance of succeeding. So consider subscribing. If you have any feedback for me, uh, anything I could improve, and if you like these videos, if there's anything, just leave it in the comments. All right, thanks for watching. I'll chat with you in the next one.